In uh, the two previous videos, we looked at how we could create a tree from scratch using Maya's paint effects. And I also showed you how you could create a custom shelf uh, with um, your custom presets for trees or whatever else you might create, uh, create in Maya. So I have my brush here, and I'm going to go ahead and just drop some of my trees that uh, I created in an earlier video. Uh, here's some examples of it here. And what I wanted to demonstrate to you today is how we can adjust the, um, we can further customize the leaves as well as the uh, trunks of these trees. Uh, let's go ahead and render it out and uh, just take a look at it. I'm going to select my perspective camera and just change the background color to something that's more of a neutral gray instead of having that black background. And we'll go ahead and render out this tree using Maya software. Uh, and here is what the tree looks like right now. Okay. Uh, but we're going to take a look at how we can use textures maybe to get a little bit uh, more realistic uh, look to both the trunk of the tree as well as to the leaves. Uh, perhaps I'll save that uh, image there and I'll select the tree and we'll get started. So I'm going to go uh, to this tab here. In this case, it's called My Tree 02. Um, and we will go to the leaf section because we'll start with that. So if you remember the previous video, we shaped the leaf using this, um, this here. I'm going to go ahead and reshape them. I'm going to make them more kind of rectangular. Uh, because we're going to actually get the shape from a texture instead using transparency. So now you can see the leaves are quite rectangular. Um, now if we come down here to the, uh, this area where we set the color, uh, what I'm going to do is uncheck this leaf use branch text, I'll uncheck that, that will give me the option of selecting an image and applying it here under image name. So I'll do that. I'll click on the folder and here is the, uh, we're going to try this image first. It's of a uh, leaf that I took a picture of using uh, the camera on my phone. So we'll try that one first. I'll say OK. And you don't see it here, uh, but if we render it out, you'll see that, in fact, my leaf has been applied to it. The only problem is that that leaf texture was a JPEG, and JPEGs do not have uh, transparency. So you can see the leaf, but then you can also see the area around the leaf, and we don't want that. So I'll go ahead and keep that image as well. And I'm going to swap out that image for another image that I worked on in Photoshop instead, uh, where I added what is called an alpha channel, or in other words, a transparency, uh, so that it won't take that background. Uh, go ahead and select that, apply it. It doesn't look like anything has changed in here. However, if we render it out, we get our transparency. And this is already looking a lot nicer. This would be a great way to get leaves that maybe look more like oak leaves that have a very interesting shape. Uh, we could use this method to do that. Now, one thing I want you to take note of is that it's still getting most of the color from these two, uh, this leaf one and leaf uh, color two uh, channels that have been set here. Uh, now, if I were to make both of these, uh, let's say, make them both white, you can see what the tree looks like in here, uh, and then render it out, what you'll notice is then it starts to get more of the color from the actual image itself. Uh, still not the best result. I think what I would do is come in here to leaf one color, and I'm still going to uh, give it, I'm still going to set the color myself. Okay. 
and we'll try rendering it out again. And perhaps I like that a little bit more. I'll go ahead and keep that image and maybe zoom out and we'll take another render of it and see how it's looking. And there you can see that these leaves are much more convincing than the leaves that we had before. Okay, um, I actually don't really like the way that these trees are distributed right now. We've got these two trees here, we've got these two trees here. Let's go over to this tab and we'll just play around with the seed. See if we can get a different and more interesting distribution. I kind of like that, but it's a little bit, a little bit too many trees, uh, I think. We'll just find something that maybe works a little better. I like how that this is starting to have a little bit more variety to it. That's kind of nice. Maybe I'll go back to this tab and return to the uh, creation. And I think I'll actually bring the tubes per step down yet further as we look at this. And maybe we'll go with that. So we've worked on the leaves. And this is what the tree is looking like now when we render it out. Let's now move on to the bark of the trees. So for the bark of the trees, what we need to do is come way up here in our attribute editor to uh, the shading. If you remember from the previous video, we actually set the color of the tree here under color one and color two. Uh, just as an example, you'll remember we tried colors like red and yellow just to really see what's happening there. I'll go ahead and leave these at those colors for the time being while we take a look at how we can apply a texture which will uh, start to work as maybe the bark on these trees. So what I'm going to do is come down here to texturing and I'm going to check map color. And under the uh, texture type, instead of checker, uh, we'll go with file because that's what we're going to be doing, applying an image file. And uh, finally for map method, instead of tube uh, 2D, I'm going to go with tube 3D, and then we'll come over here to the image name, click on the folder, and I've created this texture here, uh, which I'm going to apply. We'll say open, and let's render it out and see what it looks like. What you can see is that it's still using those colors uh, that we set earlier, but we are starting to get some of that texture in here as well. Uh, one other thing that we can do is uh, set the repeat U and V on this, referring to how many times the texture repeats. Uh, I think that it works fine on the V going around the tree, but perhaps the length uh, we want that to repeat a number of times. So I'm going to take the repeat U and let's try setting it to a higher number. Uh, we could try nine, for example, and rendering that out. And that starts to look a little bit uh, better. Let's zoom in on this and take a look. think that's looking much better. Uh, I'm going to return to where I set these colors here and we'll choose maybe a different color to use with this, maybe going back to the original colors that I had before. And we can try rendering that out. And this starts to look a lot better, much more like uh, a tree. So if we zoom out and render our tree, we now have a leaf texture which we have created and we also have a bark texture which our tree is also using. 
Uh, before finishing up this video, we'll take a look at one more thing very quickly. Uh, my trees are here. I'm going to select them. And if you remember, uh, like the neon sign we looked at many videos ago, uh, we can convert our paint effects to become polygon objects. And let's try that out. So I've selected my, uh, my stroke, my paint effect stroke here. And I'm going to go to Modify, Convert, Paint Effects to Polygons. We'll open up the options and make sure that the settings are good. Uh, the setting I like to have is a quad output so that we don't get triangles, but we get quads instead. And we'll go ahead and apply. So now these are just regular polygon objects. In fact, if we select, you'll notice that it's more than just one polygon object. It's actually two. It's created a separate polygon mesh for the actual tree and another one for the leaves. And if we were to select these, you can notice that they've got the vertices, they've got, got soft select on, so I'm just going to turn that off. Uh, we've got our, our vertices, we've got our faces. Uh, at this point, we could now work on this as a regular polygon mesh, just like you would any other polygon mesh. Uh, you may have noticed that our material disappeared, uh, but in fact it did not. Uh, remember that 4 is wireframe, 5 is shaded, and 6 is textured. So when we press 6, you'll notice that these are textured. In fact, in many ways, the textures actually look nicer than they did when it was a paint effect. And if we now go to our hypershade, uh, you'll notice that it has actually created, when we converted it to a polygon mesh, it actually created uh, two shaders here, one for our leaf and the other for the, uh, for the bark. If we select the bark texture, you'll notice in the color channel, it's been assigned here. Uh, it's using a ramp, uh, but it's also uh, still using the uh, texture also that we assigned to it, which is how we're getting this really nice um, bark texture here. Uh, let's take a quick look at what's actually happening with this texture because uh, it's actually quite interesting. Going to my hypershade, I'll select the shader here, and then I will click on the input and output connections for that shader or material. And what you'll notice is, here's our material, a ramp is feeding into the color channel, but into the ramp is feeding, uh, my tree bark texture is feeding into something into the ramp. Uh, now, if I select the ramp and we go to the attribute editor, you'll notice that the color is still happening with this ramp here. Uh, if we were to change the uh, colors here that we use, you'll see that they still affect the, um, the color of our tree. So what is the bark texture doing? Well, if we look at it here, you'll notice that it is actually feeding into what is called the color gain. If I click on this black arrow here, you'll see that there is my tree bark texture, uh, which looks like this. And that is feeding into it to get this more uh, bark-like texture uh, that makes these trees look much more convincing. 
Uh, now, if we look at the leaf texture, on the other hand, and go to its uh, up and downstream connections, or input and output, uh, you'll notice that uh, we have our shader. Uh, once again, a ramp is feeding into the color, uh, but we also have my leaf texture, which is feeding into it in a very similar way to the bark. Uh, but we also have uh, the transparency coming from this targa feeding into the transparency of this shader, uh, which is still giving us our transparency on the leaf so that we get that nice leaf shape. Uh, and the last thing I'd like to mention before wrapping up this video, remember, we actually uh, converted these into polygon meshes. Uh, and one advantage to that is that I think that they're actually, uh, it's easier to light them effectively. As you can see, I've thrown a light in here. I have my trees casting shadows. Uh, and uh, I think that the lighting on these polygon meshes is uh, much more effective than, uh, than on the paint effects trees. In fact, if we were to draw one of our paint effects trees in here, uh, we could take a look and compare. And as you can see, it is actually not uh, casting any shadows and uh, we need to render it to really be able to look at uh, what it looks like. It might be casting a shadow when we render it. Let's check it out. Uh, actually, to do that, I need to turn on the shadows uh, very quickly, which I have not done yet. So let me turn them on here. Tell it to use depth map shadows. And we can try rendering it out. And as you can see also in the render, uh, the polygon meshes look much more convincing than the uh, paint effect itself. Anyway, I hope that uh, this has been an interesting and informative video for you, and thank you for watching.